Hello everyone, Thunderty Steve here, and today I will be featuring a Gruel Transmogrify deck and Explorer. The link to the list is in the description below. I'm going to talk about the general plan of the deck, and then we'll play a couple of games. So, let's go. This deck is kind of very simple in what it wants to do. We want to use Luca, Indomitable Creativity, or Transmogrify, which what they do is basically exile a creature you control until and then you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature and put the revealed creature into the battlefield and so we want to transmogrify any of our token creation cards so we have ranger class courier's briefcase fable careful cultivation and yugen to make tokens and then when we transmogrify them or you know luca them we only have one creature in our deck, which is Titan of Industry, which will then come out, hopefully on turn four or five. And so that's basically what the deck is. It's nothing really more complicated than that. We want a token, and then we want to use one of our red transform spells to turn that token into a Titan of Industry. Now... With that being said, it is a very, very complex deck in how you want to navigate turns. Whenever, if you go to transmogrify a creature you control, your opponent can kill it in response, and then you won't get to get the Titan of Industry. So against certain decks, you have to play around or consider the different removal options your opponent have. But other than that, that's the deck in a nutshell. So let's go play some games and see how it works out. Okay, we have we have a lot of different tokens now, which is really, really good. And the Fable to try and find one of our transform pieces. Or transmogrify-like effect. I, I have found that this deck can get very easily posed if... I think the token creation parts are much more important than the what other effect than the transmogrify part because i i feel like often i am left with a hand with more transmogrify transmogrify like effects in our hand and nothing to target than having all these token creations without any way to transform them because at least the tokens do something on their own and i think as i play this deck more i'm learning to mulligan for that more than maybe other things so now we can get one Let's create a rhino and put a shield on the titan. I don't know what our opponent could have here. They might be a Fires of Invention deck with Karuga as, you know, the companion that might make sense. Let's attack and see what happens here. Maybe we should have put the shield counter on the Rhino. Because then it still trades and lives. Instead of just protecting the Titan. Okay. We can still cast the Titan of Industry here if we want to during our next turn. Assuming our opponent doesn't have any interaction. A tapped castle is great, I think. Counterspell? Divide by zero. P 
teachings. So uh, we're just going to attack here because we're not going to use the treasure from the briefcase to make a token. This is a pretty intense game. Intense as in, like, there's a lot going on here. And our opponent could have a lot of ways to interact with us, right? Balance is a really good way. Uh, it's a really good thing against the Titan of Industry decks. So let's transmogrify the Remnant. Because it will turn into a Titan. Our opponent did have that. So... Okay. Nothing there. Maybe that was wrong. Are we just supposed to target Reflection of Kiki Jiki? There, I feel like I shouldn't. We There are just a lot of things we needed to worry about and consider. And I think that might have just been the best thing to do, but maybe not. The good position we are in is our opponent has to deal with... Like, the Titans are a threat coming down. And if our opponent doesn't have counter magic for them, we will be leaving a Rhino behind, at least. And probably gaining life. And if our opponent doesn't have counter magic, we get to Kiki Jiki and attack with one right away. Another divide. Okay. And again, nothing we can do, really. I'm not going to trade the B Bone Crusher Giant with the reflection of Kiki Jiki. So, again, just hoping. Our opponent doesn't have divide by zero. Maybe if we fable of the mirror breaker and just make a two 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 attack, that might be okay. I don't know. Oh, Cavalier Flame. Looks like our opponent is on a fires of invention type deck. But just hasn't drawn the fires yet. Which would make sense with Karuga as the companion. So for two mana, what what's going to mess up our titan here? Hmm. Oh. It's fine. We'll put a counter there. And then I can finally make a token of the Titan of Industry and attack. Are you going to bounce it in response? Okay. Figured that was going to happen. Didn't want it to, but you know. Ouch. So this is the thing too. Maybe we could be, we're being a little too aggressive with our stuff. We could have played around a lot of maybe the opponent's removal if we wanted to and maybe i should have i don't know though oh, everything gains haste so this can block that that's 12 
All right, let's hope we get a land here. We did not, but... We do that, we get to Luca the monk away. Let's gain five life and create. Maybe I should have been gaining life. Let's gain five and create. That's a lot of... Our opponent has to deal with a lot. And we can always turn a Rhino into... Another Titan of Industry. Next turn. So we might be fine. We could also Reflection of Kiki Jiki. A Titan of Industry. Then turn Reflection into a Titan. And so we get to attack with both Rhinos and the Titan. Alright, GG. That was a lot. Okay. We'll keep this hand. Because I'm keeping it. We have the careful cultivation on turn two. Oh, uh, that's... So we're going to Corey's briefcase here. I think we need more mana. Next turn we can careful cultivation and then transmogrify potentially. But the mono blue tempo deck has a lot of ways to potentially punish us. And like that two mana is... Is a lot. Let's do this, then we get to careful cultivation, and see what's up. Another Supreme Phantom, that's a lot. Oh, oh, our opponent is tapping out. One, two, three, four, five. And our opponent can't interact with this. So we can exile this token. I want to destroy the Curious Obsession and create a Rhino. Maybe we could have gained life here. But I don't think we necessarily need it. The Titan of Industry has reach, so can block. Our opponent would have to either tap it or return it. Tap it with the Shacklegeist, I think. But there's a lot our opponent now needs to do in order to stop us from getting Titan of Industry. And they didn't, so we won. Huh. We go first... We don't have any transmogrify effects. But we do have tokens, and can we get a Titan of Industry early? Enough? I don't know. I don't know if this is the right... Part of me feels like I needed to mulligan, but then also part of me was like... So, I don't know. I don't know. But it's, again, the same matchup. So, we'll see how this one plays. Tackle guys? Okay. obsession we would love for our opponent to tap out that's not gonna happen but i would love it yeah ouch well 
I'll just courier's briefcase and take courier's briefcase. No land, sadly. We are getting there with two damage. Opponent had a brazen borrower, which is an interesting choice to bounce. Now, I mean, not necessarily interesting because, you know, they want to use their mana and everything. But knowing that we are a Luka deck and the Brazen Bar is one of the only ways you can interact. I mean, there is going to be tons of counter magic here that we cry about, so. Oh. So I'm assuming there's a bounce spell here. There has to be. Okay. Jackalgeist. All right. I think I would like a land. We're going to Luka again. More bounce or another brazen borrower? Oh, okay. So we want to destroy the Curious Obsession and create a 4-4. Four -four, I think. That's going to stop our opponent from doing a lot of damage very, very quickly. Now, let's. If we. Our opponent wants to attack Luca, they're going to have to tap it. We will not give them a free thing. Oh, no, another Shackle guy? Great. And a rattle chains. Uh oh. Ouch. Oh, of course. I think we're just dead here. Seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. We can. We can't deal enough. I think. Opponent can tap both of our flyers. Opponent can activate Faceless Haven and attack and probably be lethal. It's close. I'm going to let them figure it out. We kept it back as much as we possibly could. So. Oh, yeah, and we're we're dead here, so GG. Okay, uh, our opponent is on Gigantha, which hopefully does not mean sack, because that's very bad. The black-red sacrifice deck is really, really hard for us to, <laughs> for us to beat, because the Resolve Mayhem Devil means we're never Luka-ing anything. So we'll do this. Turn two, careful cultivation. And our opponent is on sack, which love to see. And I mean that in a way that I actually don't love to see. And if that wasn't obvious. 
Mirror Breaker? Yep. Go. We just need our opponent to not... Our opponent knows that... What type of deck we are. <laughs> so we need our opponent to now not... Try and find a Mayhem Devil. Which is very unlikely and not gonna happen. But... There was a Mulligan, so maybe... Maybe things can go our way. So actually what I'm going to do here is we're not going to Luka here. We're going to put out the Titan of Industry because this leaves us a lot less vulnerable to spot removal if we were to Luka to target one of our monks. And then what we can do here is create a 4-4 and destroy the Fable. So we have a... You know, we don't have to worry about a lot of things. And now a... Mayhem Devil doesn't absolutely destroy us. It's not great, but... You know. Now a Mayhem Devil can absolutely destroy us because we don't have a big, big threat. But the Riveteer's Charm going away... Now makes sense what our opponent did. We do have a blocker on... The goblin if it attacks it'll put now we don't and now we're kind of left in a very similar situation where our opponent probably has removal in hand and it's not that's not good for us right oh deadly dispute though This is definitely a removal spell. A fatal push, okay. This is an active Hive of the Eye Tyrant on the Luka. And now... This isn't fantastic for us. We need to hope to draw into a... Um, we can cast a in the Titan of Industry if it enters the back, if it ever goes on top of our library. So that's okay. Our opponent, though, is in... Only has two cards in hand, but if one of those is the Corvold, we're still dead, or Mayhem Devil, we're basically dead. So we're not... I'm not very happy about our position. Yeah. And this is absolutely terrible. We're gonna have a very, very hard time winning now. So let's just hope. I don't even know what we want on top of our library. Titan of Industry, maybe this is not what we wanted.
and no, we definitely wanted a Titan of Industry on top of our library because we couldn't do anything else. The Ranger class, we only have Titan in our deck, really. That's something that we can use. And, and right now, we're dead on board. Our opponent can sacrifice a lot of things to definitely empower the Corbold. So... Ouch. Mm hmm I guess maybe if our opponent only has lands in hand and nothing in the top five cards, we're not dead on board, but things would have to go very, very poorly for us to not be dead this turn. Which happens, so... All right, we're very, very, very dead. Let, let's just let this happen. We're at 14. I thought we were very dead. I, I think, like, they're still... A uh, food that can be made. Like, I thought maybe sacrificing the cat, making the food, then bring it back may have been lethal. I'm not going to do that math for our opponent. And if our opponent didn't do the math, then... we're We're still in a very, very bad spot, though. Because there's no way we can win here. One of the interesting parts about this deck is you can't really ever win on your turn with a big good top deck. You kind of just have to get the advantage of the Titan attacking over a couple of turns. And so in our current spot, we're just not... No top deck is ever going to do anything for us. So we'll just do that. Do this. Do nothing. And maybe... Let's just have some uh, high-quality time. Our opponent is, uh, I believe, after office TV. If you want to go watch <laughs> them stream, I don't know if they're streaming right now, but at, you know, twitch.tv slash after office. So shout out to that. And that's okay. I don't I don't mind losing. It's fine. GG. Thank you for watching me play some Gruel Transmogrify and Explore. This deck was not anywhere near as powerful or as effective as I thought it would be. And I think there's a couple of reasons why. But I the first is, you know. It's a deck that requires a lot of, you know, understanding the play patterns and how to mulligan. And I probably wasn't mulliganing as well as I needed to. And I wasn't trying to find the correct proportion of pieces in our opening hand. And that's probably something that comes with a lot of experience. So I think playing this deck, like all decks, will reward you. But for me, like, every, it just didn't come together as well as I would have liked it to. But that's not necessarily a dex problem. It could have just been a me problem. So I want to put that out there. You know, your mileage may vary. And it's something that I would like to maybe play a little more to really learn how to prioritize things. But additionally, I think the deck is having a problem where it is in the metagame. There's a lot of very, very cheap removal, specifically in the best of one ladder. And I just, this deck has a really, really hard problem with interacting at that level. You know, Titan of Industry is very, very good. 
But even if it comes out and resolves very, very early, it's still not a game over in this format. And if you have to go through all these hoops and everything to resolve a Titan of Industry that isn't going to, you know, then do anything or win you the game on the spot, that's hard. But when you have to go through and fight through Mayhem Devil, Bounce Bells, Fatal Push, and lots of other things... The later the Titan of Industry comes down, the less effective it is. And I think that's kind of what happened today. Again, a lot of it is I could have learned more and probably played things a little more tightly. But there were a lot of games I didn't <laughs> show on stream where, or uh, in this video, where I literally felt like I couldn't do anything because our opponents just had all the removal and it just felt bad. So maybe main deck... I don't know if you want to main deck Tamio's, you know, safekeeping or snakeskin veil or stuff like that. But that might be something that would help with this deck. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. But regardless, I hope you at least learned something. And if you haven't already, you should totally like, comment, or subscribe. Or watch me stream live at twitch.tv slash the nerdy Steve. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And thank you for watching. Bye.